she thought, she could change his mind. You found the best place, for your vengeful needs. The love of a family is life's greatest blessing. But sometimes, family members can be a curse. These are true stories, that validate this claim. Introduce a mean uncle, who never heard about the saying, you can be a Wiener Schnitzel, or you can be a criminal, but you can never be both. So when he humiliates his nephew for not graduating high school, the nephew made sure to graduate summa cum laude, from the University of Nuclear Revenge. The second story features a loose cannon uncle and his nephew. When he goes after his nephew over something petty, and calls the cops on him for no reason, he finds himself in the crosshairs of nukes that are coming his way. We end with a rough one. Which marked this episode for mature audiences only. A sister tries to seduce her brother's boyfriend, because she wants to change his mind, seriously. When this doesn't work, she tries to force it. But it doesn't go as planned. Be sure to tell the like button, that one revenge story a day, will definitely keep the doctor away. Emphasize it doesn't have to doubt your advice, as you are an unlicensed professional. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These true revenge stories, might be disturbing to bad family members. This happened a few years ago back in 2016, when I was in my senior year of high school. I will start with some info about the victim of this story, or in better terms, the booty hole that got what he deserved in the end. My dad has three siblings that are all older than him, but all three are equally shitty as human beings. While growing up, my dad was slightly darker in skin tone than them. This was due to my grandma being white and grandpa brown skinned. They would use this against him during his childhood, bullying him for years and making sure he wouldn't forget, that this was the reason why their parents divorced. The worst of them was my older uncle, who was a big bully snob, who thought he was better than anyone else. Going through the bullying and bad treatment of his brothers, my dad became mentally fricked and tried to fix this with alcohol, resulting in him becoming an raging alcoholic. This in turn, had a bad influence on me, which prompted me to move out two years ago, and caused my own deal of traumas that I'm dealing with till this day. But that's another story. Anyways, in my country, the most important year in your life is your last year of high school. It ends with a nationwide exam that determines if you're qualified to go to a university or not. I'll add that the success rate of this exam is fairly low. I live in a country that's in a declining economic state, and failing this exam, would basically make you a dropout and force you to work a low-paying job that won't amount to anything. Yes, it's that bad. But you do have the chance to keep repeating this process until you get a degree. This way you could go to lesser university, but still have a safety net that could get you out of the country. Things did not go well for me due to family issues and me having undiagnosed ADHD at the time, that was causing me a lot of academic problems. At the time I couldn't place this issue that I had, so without me knowing the cause, it made me feel really depressed. Goes without saying that it ended up in me failing that year. And due to the importance of that exam, people saw it as a shame and kind of a big let down. Needless to say due to the long introduction, my family never had a relationship with my uncles. So they looked down on us due to my father being an alcoholic and us being dirt poor, which made them think even lesser of us. Bear in mind, when grandpa passed away, they took everything of the inheritance and split it without giving anything to my dad. This included a house and a piece of land, that could have lifted us at least to a mid-class level. Lo and behold, the worst of the uncles. My dad's oldest brother who I haven't seen since I was seven, came to visit us three days after failing my exams. I mostly disliked him because of the stories I've heard about him. But his visit wasn't welcome at all, as it felt weird, like he had no business being around us and he came uninvited. My mom sat him down and started making the usual small talk, then she called me, saying that my uncle wanted to say hi. I went and the conversation went as follows. Oh, look how much you've grown up, it's been a while since I've seen you. You look just like your dad, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree after all. Even in terms of being a successful person you're following his footsteps. Directly after saying this, he let out the most loud and sarcastic evil laugh. I immediately responded with, what do you mean by that? Well, I heard you failed your high school exam. Guess this branch of the family is bound to be the loser side. I retaliated by saying, I guess you better shut your mouth and go to hell, since you're not even welcome here. Guess your skank mom didn't raise you well. But what could I expect from hood rats like you? After this, 
Things devolved into a shouting match and he left. I was mad for a while. I couldn't forget the humiliation. So I did what I needed to do, and I decided that I would exact revenge one day. I started plotting. I kept digging till I discovered that all his business and assets are on his wife's name, and he basically owns nothing. So I concluded that he's committing tax fraud and ripping off his formal business associate out of a lot of money. He's doing this before declaring bankruptcy and transferring the money, assets and everything else he owns to his wife to evade taxes. I had this insights because I also had contact with some of his former employees. After thinking this through, and asking how they stand towards him. I got some to agree to testify these claims, would this ever come to court? Their reason was simple, he truly was a human excrement of a person. They emphasized how bad he would treat his employees, saying it was absolute trash to work for him. My plans were to go pro revenge on him, but it all evolved out of my control into a gift from the gods. Which forced me to make an anonymous account to tell the story, as it went nuclear real quick. I couldn't even hope for a better outcome than this. He came to our house to meet my dad, who was a jeweler by trade. He wanted my dad to forge him a golden custom ring for his daughter's 10th birthday. While he's in our house, he called out for me and asked if I could lend him a phone charger, as his phone was dying. At that moment it just hit me and I almost jumped from glee. This was my chance to get his phone in my hands and dig around. What if I could find any documents or emails, that can be used later in the police case I was assembling against him. So I told him I didn't have a charger brick, but I could charge his phone with a cable from my laptop. Him not knowing any better, like the true boomer he is, he gave me his phone without batting an eye. His phone had a passcode and asking for it would be too suspicious. So my plan to check his email went down the drain. But no biggie, as I removed his SD card and put it in my laptop. I copied all his files, charged his phone and gave it back. He left after finishing his business with my dad. I then shut my door and locked myself in to check the files. I found nothing at all, but as soon as I was giving up, I found a well-hidden file. This file had a few videos in it, and after going through them, I struck gold. A full-blown sexy time tape of him with another woman, with his face fully visible clear as daylight, and I was literally singing from excitement. Now I'm armed with nukes, I could finally start the ignition sequence. I created a Facebook account, pretending to be the account of his mistress. I made sure to be active for some weeks, befriending the people that were commenting and interacting with her actual page. After this, I added his wife. I introduced myself as her husband's mistress, but she didn't believe me at first. Talking about personal information, only someone close could know, proved there might be some truth to what I'm telling. So it got her intrigued. I told her that he lied to me, by saying they were divorced. He even promised, to ask my hand for marriage. She then requested to talk on the phone. So I told a female friend about the situation and asked to lend her voice, to which she agreed. After talking to her on the phone, she was destroyed. And this was when I sealed the deal, by sending the tape for good measure. She filed for divorce immediately and even sued him for infidelity, making him lose custody and visitation rights to his girls. She was scorned, and she went scorched earth. She took everything from him. She also took the house, all his money and assets, which was easy since they were on her name. He became homeless overnight, with zero pennies to his name. But that wasn't enough for me. He didn't just humiliate me and my family. He also badmouthed my mom. I had to finish this. I met up with his former business partner through a former employee. This employee felt a special kind of hatred towards my uncle, so he had no problem with telling what my uncle did. We got together to discuss further proceedings. Making sure the concerning employee would testify against him in court. After this, the partner agreed to file a lawsuit. The cherry on top was yet to be delivered. It came when his ex-wife testified against him. She said he threatened her safety and their kids, if she didn't put the assets on her name. She had actual phone recordings of him being abusive towards them. In these, you could hear him threaten them all while forcing her to become his tax evasion tool. She said she was afraid to share these before, due to fearing for her children's safety. The judge would look upon the divorce case also, and the judge had everything he needed. My uncle got 15 years in jail, and it went so fast that he couldn't even comprehend what happened before he was on his way to the slammer. He'll never see his family again, and he'll never have his fortune back. Just to add more insult to injury, I visited him a year ago and I just said one sentence. This would have never happened, if you just didn't call me a loser, and I left. 
The look on his face while he pieced everything together, almost cured my depression. I never told my involvement in this story to a soul, except my little sister, my female friend that helped me, and now you. But I had to tell him too, just to sleep better at night. So my uncle came over to my house for my birthday, both of us are gun owners. I compete in competitions and he's just the kind of guy to go to the range once a month. We had gone shooting the previous day and only brought out a few guns, because we had some technical stuff to work on with a few guns, so it wasn't really a trip just for shooting. My uncle surprised me on the trip with some tannerite, which is an explosive you set off by shooting it. So we ended up blowing some stuff up while out there, but saving most of it for the next day. The next day, we were packing up to actually go out shooting for real, instead of spending the day tinkering, and my uncle asked me to bring one of my guns that is very expensive and hard to find ammo, so he could shoot with it. I told him I only had about 20 rounds for it and I would like to save them for another day, since I didn't know if I'd be able to find more. Here's where things start falling apart. My uncle is known to be a bit scummy and a hothead, so he snapped and tried guilting me into bringing the gun, telling me I owe him for the tannerite. I told him that I didn't realize I would have to pay him back for a gift and if that was the case, he could just have the remaining tannerite. Then walked back to my room to start putting away my guns, since I could tell this was pretty much gonna ruin the day. This made him lose his absolute shit, and he starts yelling and stomping about me being an ungrateful piece of shit, and how he should kick my ass to teach me a lesson. At this point, I tell him to get out of my house if he's gonna threaten me, but then he charges up the stairs, coming at me. My uncle is a very large and fit man, so I grab the bear spray out of my shooting bag, the shooting range we use is in the middle of nowhere, and pointed it at him. My uncle has been maced before, so he quickly backed down and left, damaging my door on the way out. I just went about my day after this, packing up most of the guns but loading a couple into the car, because I planned to still head to the range as not to let him ruin my fun. As I'm packing up the car, a couple police cars roll up and they start shouting at me to get on the ground and they put me in handcuffs. I pretty quickly found out they were there, because my uncle called and said I pointed a weapon at him and mentioned my guns. I ended up having to show the police the footage from my security camera before they let me go. After that day, I fully cut ties with my uncle and just moved on with my life, but I came to find out that he was talking crap about me to family members, which is when I started plotting my revenge. I knew my uncle illegally stored his restricted guns, and I knew he spent quite a bit of money on them, but I also knew the cops probably wouldn't bother since I had no proof. I found out that my uncle had been shooting animals in his yard in the city. And he brags to my grandma by sending pictures of his adventures. One of the animals he shot is an endangered species, and I knew my grandma's phone had the picture on it. So I eventually snuck onto my grandma's phone, and sent myself all the incriminating pictures, including ones of the illegal guns and reported it anonymously to the police. Today, my uncle got arrested, fish and game seized his cars and guns, his wife has pretty much left him, since the police raid traumatized her and their kids. All of his gun friends have gone off grid, so he has no support. Court date and charges are unknown, but from my research, he's looking at a really long sentence. I feel absolutely no remorse, because I've always said I don't think him having access to firearms was safe, since he can be violent and he's overall a shitty person. I can finally talk about this because all the legal proceedings have been dealt with. I'll jump straight into it. I'm a male, and I gave my sister the whooping of her lifetime, for harassing my boyfriend. We're all in our 20s, and I'm her elder. So I've been dating my boyfriend Mark for about 5 years. He's the best thing that has ever happened to me. He's kind, smart, understanding and absolutely beautiful. He was a bit closed off when we started dating and was afraid to initiate any form of intimacy. I thought it was because I was his first relationship and maybe he was nervous. 6 months into us dating, he tells me that between the ages of 5 and 12 he had a rough childhood. His mother violated him in the most extreme sense of the word. His father left when he was around 4. It messed him up in the head for a while and when it got out, his mother was arrested and he and his two older sisters were put in the custody of their grandparents, who they lived with ever since. He was placed in intensive therapy and still goes to this day. He's come a long way and has healed a lot, but he still has some days when he gets really depressed and cries. Part of his therapy was exercising, so about two years ago he and I started doing some bodybuilding workouts. I toned up a lot, put 20 extra pounds of muscle on and he toned up a bit too. 
because we've been dating for so long and have marriage in mind, he told my family, a less detailed version, and they welcomed him with love and support. That was about three years after he told me. Now for my sister Sally. I've suspected she's had a bit of a crush on him, she'll flirt sometimes here and there but he never reciprocated and usually ignored her. I've talked to her about it many times, as it was becoming an issue, but she didn't listen. To make a long story short, I had gone out one Saturday afternoon with some friends to get some drinks and left Mark behind, because he didn't feel like going. My sister had texted me prior to ask if she could borrow a few things from me, a sweatshirt, camera, and a third thing that doesn't come to mind at the moment. I said sure and to get it whenever. She went when I was out, unknowingly. When I came home I found my boyfriend on the ground crying his eyes out and my sister trying to calm him down. He was having a panic attack. It's never safe to touch him when he has an episode because he may act out violently due to his headspace. Her hands were all over him and he was trying to push her away. Her shirt was also on the ground and she was only in her bra. I tore her away and asked what the fuck she was doing. She said that she was trying on the sweatshirt when he walked in on her, freaked out and went into an episode. However, Mark through his tears said she tried to touch him. I asked my sister if it was true and she said no, but Mark again said she tried to touch him. We have cameras in the house and I pointed it out to my sister. Her face went wet and I don't know what came over me, but all I saw was red. I can't remember much because I was so intensely angry, but I know I whooped her so hard, she forgot her first name. I can't even remember if I was the one who called 911 or her though. I do remember kind of snapping out of it, because Mark was still going through his episode and I could hear him cry louder so I had to help him get through it. It's all a haze. The aftermath was that I broke my sister's nose, gave her a black eye and bruised her ribs. She was in the hospital for a few days. This all happened right before the end of 2019 and everything was just settled this last month. After all this happened, I got a better sense of what took place. As everything was recorded on our home cameras. The incident happened in our kitchen, the front door leads down a hall directly to our open kitchen and to the right is our living room that leads to the bedrooms. We have these cameras in every room but the bath and bedrooms, because we have a great Dane named Butler, he's black and has a white oval patch from his chest to his tummy, he looks like a butler, who likes to get into everything, so we set up cameras to keep an eye on him while we're out. The cameras don't have sound recording. My sister didn't achieve violating Mark, but she did try to course him into having sexy time with her. She didn't know beforehand that I was out when she came over. I don't have the recording anymore, it was too painful to keep let alone watch, also, my memory of the whole thing is hazy but I'll try to tell it from memory. The tape would show the following events. It showed Mark answering the door. Again our cameras don't have sound recording, but Mark said that when he answered the door, she told him that she was there to get my camera and sweatshirt, he said okay and let her in. He was watching the television, so he went back to his show while she walked into our room. She called out to him for help and the camera showed Mark getting up to help her. I don't remember how long they were in there, but the tape showed Mark rush out of the room while holding his hands out as if trying to stop an attacker. My sister then emerged half naked while holding onto her shirt. Mark backed up into the kitchen still holding his hand out while she advanced towards him. Mark said he was telling her to put her shirt on and to leave, but she kept saying something along the lines of. Hey, it's okay. I just need some help that's all. You're a nice guy. Just help me out a little. I think by that point he was declining into a panic attack as he started shaking. My sister took that opportunity to hug him. She claimed she did it to try and calm him down, but the tape showed her kind of grinding up on him. He pushed her away and he fell to the ground crying and screaming. She then got down by him and was trying to wave her hands through his hair. Her other hand was also moving up towards his privates. I remember from the tape seeing Mark flinch backwards and try to push her away. She always moved back closer to him. A few minutes later is when I got home and beat her to an inch of her life. I can't remember who called the police but the police had showed up and my sister limped to the door while I was trying to help Mark calm down. I kind of remember them asking questions and trying to help Mark calm down. They thought he was going into shock, so they put a blanket over him and the paramedics came. My sister was quickly evaluated and then taken away to the hospital. Mark and I stayed behind because by that point he had started to regain control again. I remember my parents showing up and asking what happened, and I told them everything. My mom stayed with Mark and I while my dad drove to the hospital to see my sister. Mark and I pressed charges on my sister, emotional trauma and sexual battery, 
class A1 felony where I'm from. My sister tried to sue me, a misdemeanor charge, but it was dropped. With the evidence we had provided, my sister was sentenced to 60 days of incarceration with a bond of $5,000. No one paid. She also has to serve 200 hours of community service and her name was added to the offender registry. She can appeal to the courts to have it removed after 10 years. She was also placed under a restraining order. On top of that, my sister owes us $25,000. My sister was cut off from the entire family and still is. I got a small slap on the wrist and have to do 50 hours of community service. Nothing too bad. There was a moment where we thought I would get in trouble because I assaulted her when she wasn't making advances. But I had a wonderful lawyer who explained that I had no way of knowing if she was going to do something else, therefore I acted out in self-defense for someone who couldn't protect themselves. Mark regressed tremendously, to the point that he couldn't sleep in the same bed as me for months. He was required to go into even more extensive therapy. He's going in the right way, but he's nowhere like he was before it happened. He has these moments when his eyes glass over and he gets this far away look. It's something I've never seen before and I just know that he's reliving everything. Sometimes there's nothing I can do and I have to watch him cry until he tires himself out and falls asleep. It will take a long time for him to heal. Part of me feels like it's my fault. While I talked to her about how her flirting was inappropriate and made both Mark and I feel uncomfortable. I sometimes let it slide, because Mark would ignore her and remove himself. I never thought it would get that bad. I feel like I should have been more mean in my telling her to back off. I consider myself bisexual but I lean more towards men, while Mark is interested in men only. He finds the female body disturbing, to the point that we have had to skip over full female nudity scenes in movies. My sister knew of this. When I asked her why she would do such a thing, she said that she thought she could change his mind. I'm not proud of what I did, but I'm also not sorry. I don't plan on doing anything like this again. I honestly scared myself. I could have killed her, I probably would have if I didn't snap out of it to help Mark. That thought scares me. I'm not a violent person, I don't condone violence, but seeing him in such a vulnerable state after everything he had been through and knowing that it was my sister who did that to him, after knowing everything he's been through, I just blacked out. My therapist told me that when you're really close to somebody who has experienced a lot of trauma sometimes that trauma rolls onto you. So in stressful situations you can act out in ways you never thought you could. However, there are ways to combat that, and I've been doing a lot of work to make sure that something like this never happens again. I'll end on a more positive note. Some days it's hard, but he's been through so much and it's only making him stronger. He's a wonderful man, an angel and I couldn't imagine my life without him. He's honestly the funniest and wittiest person I've ever met, and he always tries to be optimistic. You stayed till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I want to take this moment to thank you, I really appreciate you. Remember that these stories really happened, and people chose to share it with us. So I ask you to be respectful in the comment section. I guess that'll be it, so I'll see you in the next one.